Hi, my name is Mark, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to take a look at yarn weights and a variety of fiber contents. If you're a new crafter, a lover of yarn, or someone who's been crafting for years, stick around to see some of my favorite fibers. Before we get too far into the video, I want to take a second to acknowledge all of the support I've received on this channel. If you're someone who's been watching my videos, commenting, or even someone who's subscribed to the channel, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. Stick around to the end of this video for my first giveaway to acknowledge hitting 1,000 subscribers. For now, let's get into the yarn. Yarn producers create fiber in a number of weights, everything from lace weight yarns to super bulky. So let's look at them in detail. Lace weight yarns include things like runners. Runners are meant to be carried with another fiber. So in this case, we have sequins that you could add to a project. You could carry this with any other weight, or um, you could double it or carry it with another lace weight for something very lightweight or lacy. Here's another example of a runner. This is from Ikigai Fibers, and it's a pom-pom runner. So as you carry this with another fiber, you'll have pom-poms that appear along your knit or crocheted fabric. Lace weights also include things like silk, mohair, um, a variety of fiber contents. There are several wool and even acrylic lace weights. Um, it's just the weight of yarn. So a pattern designer might call for lace weight for the effect of very small stitches, very light, lacy fabric. After that, we have fingering weight. Fingering weight can be used for many projects. You can make sweaters out of fingering weight yarn. Your stitches will most likely be smaller than a typical sweater weight yarn, but people do it all the time. The biggest thing fingering weight yarn is used for is socks. So a lot of fingering weight yarns are sock yarns and they'll have nylon included in the fiber content for extra strength as you'll be wearing them in your shoes and under your feet. The next category of weight is sport weight. In my experience, I don't find a ton of sport weight produced at least in the US or carried in my local shops. Sometimes a pattern calls for sport weight and you can substitute DK or double knit. It just depends on the look and the feel of the yarn. Here I have a couple examples of DK weight yarn. This one comes from Ancient Arts. And you can see the strand of yarn is noticeably thicker than our fingering weight yarn. but they're similar. Another example of a DK weight yarn is Scout from Kelborn Woolens. Again, there's the weight of the strand. And our next category of yarn is worsted weight. Worsted weight is a sort of sweater weight yarn. You can use it again for a variety of projects. You don't have to only make sweaters from it, but it's a medium heavy yarn. And so it often works up into a decently warm and thick fabric. Here's one example of a worsted weight yarn. This is from Tina's Twisted Fibers. Tina is a local hand dyer to me in Northeastern Ohio and you can see the strand of yarn there, we're getting heavier with each example. So if I hold this strand next to a DK strand, they're very similar. Sometimes DK yarns can be heavy DK, and some worsted yarns can be light worsted. Sometimes a yarn producer will say that, this yarn, for example, is labeled as DK slash light worsted. And sometimes yarns will say light fingering, heavy fingering. 
it really depends on the fiber production and uh, how the fiber results after it's been spun, treated, dyed, and dried. After worsted weight, we have Aran weight. Again, Aran weight isn't really a clear weight. Uh, in some stores or some yarn producers, they create a weight between worsted and light bulky, and they call it Aran weight. You may have heard of Aran sweaters. So the term Aran can sometimes refer simply to the style of traditional Aran sweaters, or some people use the term to describe a specific category of yarn weight. So this is technically an Aran weight yarn, which means it's somewhere above worsted and perhaps below a light bulky. This yarn comes from Blue Sky Fibers and it's called Extra. This is a fairly lofty yarn, meaning the strand feels light and airy. It's got a good amount of squish to it. So if I were to stretch the strand, it actually looks kind of thin, maybe like a DK, but when I let the strand rest and hold it against my finger, it's definitely thicker, noticeably thicker, than our DK or even worsted weight yarn. The next category up is bulky weight yarn. I don't think I have any technical bulky weight examples, but I would say that this Woolstock Tweed, although it says Aran on the label, is pretty similar to most bulky weight yarns produced and sold in the United States. Super bulky isn't the thickest or largest weight out there. There are some novelty yarns that people use for arm knitting, hand knitting, things like that, um, that look like rope. But typically in your yarn shops, this is going to be the heaviest weight you'll find. So our super bulky comes from Malabrigo. It's called Rasta. And I've got this color in glazed carrot. And you can see the strand is immensely bigger than our fingering, for example. And it's even quite a bit bigger than our worsted weight yarn. These two yarns come from the same company, so you can see their version of a worsted and their version of a super bulky. Now, why do we have so many different weights of yarn and what do we use them for? As I mentioned with some of the examples, certain yarns have certain purposes or intended purposes. For example, the lace weight yarns, many of them are runners. You probably wouldn't crochet or knit an entire garment out of this sequined runner. It wouldn't have much structure and it probably wouldn't feel very good against your skin. So things like runners typically are held with another yarn to enhance the look, the texture, the feel. Fingering weight yarns are a really versatile yarn. Because they're so lightweight, you can make things like lightweight sweaters, shawls, socks, stockings, um, tightly knit mittens or gloves, and fingering weight yarns are often really great for color work, whether that be stranded color work or fair aisle knitting, just because the stitches are small enough that you can display a pretty large pattern and still fit it on a sweater or even a hat or cowl. What makes fingering weight so versatile is that you can also hold your strands doubled. If you hold two fingering weight strands together, typically you'll result with a sort of worsted weight yarn. So if you have a lot of fingering weight yarn on hand and you don't necessarily wanna make a lightweight project, you could double your strands and end up with a different weight. DK weight yarns are also pretty flexible. They're a little bit heavy for things like socks, but some people like to do a sort of slipper style sock. So DK is great for things like hats, mittens, scarves, sweaters, and all sorts of other projects. I would say DK is right below the medium mark, so it's a medium light yarn. On the other side of that mark is worsted. When I'm traveling and looking for yarn and I don't really have a specific project in mind, I typically pick up a single skein of worsted weight yarn because you can do a lot of projects with one skein of worsted yarn. You could make a hat out of 100 grams of worsted yarn. You could make a pair of gloves or a pair of fingerless mitts. So I like to pick up worsted weight yarn when I'm traveling if I find a colorway that I really love. Another thing to note about the heavier weight yarns is that the knitting often moves much faster. Your stitches are going to be larger because your weight of yarn is heavier 
and most likely you'll be using a larger needle size or crochet hook. I should say, as a traveling tip or picking up yarn that you're not sure of its purpose, if you go with fingering weight yarn, getting a 100 gram skein of yarn is great because it gets you a full pair of socks, sometimes even a couple pair of short socks, or you could do other projects out of one skein. As I mentioned before, Aran weight is a sort of cloudy area. A lot of people don't produce Aran weight, and a lot of designers don't necessarily call for Aran weight, but you will find many that do. Aran weight yarns can be substituted for a heavy worsted weight yarn, or sometimes be used as a light bulky yarn. It just depends on the actual fiber itself. I would say this Aran weight yarn is more similar to a worsted, so if I needed to use it for a project, I might look for Aran weight projects or worsted weight. And for our bulky and super bulky yarns, there are all sorts of projects you can make, typically things that are larger or chunkier. You're not gonna be making a pair of socks out of this weight of yarn. You could do a very bulky slipper, but most likely you'll be doing things like chunky hats, large cowls, blankets, or oversized chunky sweaters. The next question is, how do I know when to choose a specific weight of yarn? If you're following a pattern, either a pattern you found for free, that you paid for on Ravelry, or perhaps that's part of a book you own, it should give you guidance on the weight of yarn needed. Let's look at a pattern on Ravelry just to see how this works. So I'm on Ravelry.com. If you're not familiar with it, I have a link in the description box below. Great pattern resource that any crafter should be using. And I'm on the fast facts of this number nine Christmas bird stocking pattern by Birdsong Designs. All this information is available to us for free before we purchase or download a pattern. So it says here yarn weight, light fingering. Like we showed in a couple of examples, some companies label their yarn as light or heavy. So you could find a light fingering yarn for this project, or you could use regular fingering yarn, knowing that your stocking might end up being slightly larger than the pattern depicts, and that's okay because it's a Christmas stocking. If this were a garment that needs to fit, then of course you'd need to test your gauge, check your tension um, a bit more carefully before starting the project. I could talk about gauge and tension sizing for hours, and I probably will in future videos, so for now, this is just skimming the surface. A second pattern example is the Maya cardigan. This is what I'm wearing in this video. And the yarn weight called for on this pattern is actually Aran weight. And you'll see the suggested yarn listed. Most designers will give you the yarn that they used as a suggestion or recommendation. So of course, going with the yarn they recommend is a great way to get a similar resulting product, uh, but you may not want to spend the same amount they spent, you may not have access to the yarn, um, etc. So I didn't use Aran weight for my sweater, I actually used DK weight, and I just took the time to check my gauge and then choose a size that would result in a sweater that fits me in the end. So it took a little extra math, but there are a lot of ways you can customize your projects depending on the yarn you'd like to use. Now that we know what yarn we need, let's look at the actual label on a skein of yarn to see what details it gives us. I should say that with every yarn producer, their labeling and the information they give us might be different or organized differently. So take some time to look at the label and when in doubt, you can always Google the yarn you're looking at and try to find the details listed on the manufacturer website. Looking here at Scout, we'll see that first they tell us this fiber is 100% wool. Then it gives us the yardage, the meters, and the grams. Most often, yarn producers sell their yarn in 100 gram skeins. Sometimes producers will make half skeins at 50 grams, and sometimes you'll find larger skeins with 150 grams or more. People also make mini skeins of yarn that people use for color work projects, and those could have any sort of range, sometimes minis as small as 10 grams, 15 grams, 20, maybe 25. So first we see how much yarn we get and what the fiber content is. As I turn this label, 
I'll see more instructions. This yarn is a hand wash only fiber. Dry flat, low iron, do not tumble dry. And then we've got information from the company with a hashtag. Now on the label, we see where the yarn is made, the lot number and the color number. The color number obviously tells us which shade this is, but the lot number shows us what batch of yarn this came from in the dyeing process. Some yarns that are hand dyed have a lot of variety versus yarn that's done in larger quantities by machine. If you're making something out of hand dyed yarn, it's highly recommended that you make sure to get enough yarn at the beginning of your project so that it all comes from the same dye lot. If you were to buy hand dyed yarn at one point and then need one more skein a year later, it might be impossible to find a matching dye lot for that yarn. Then we're given the weight of the yarn. This is a three or light, which in our case is a DK weight yarn. Then under it, it has a little square and it says 20 to 22 stitches. This has to do with the gauge. They're telling us that if we use this recommended range of needle or hook size, we should be able to reach a gauge swatch or a four by four inch square by casting on 20 to 22 stitches. Then we've got the recommended needle size and the recommended crochet hook size. This is given in millimeters and also US numbers or letters. So that's a lot to take in. When you're looking at a project, if it's something that doesn't need to fit exactly, something like a shawl, something like a cowl, a blanket, where the size is flexible, it's not so important to follow the gauge to the T. If you're making something that needs to fit, like a hat, a sweater, a pair of socks, it's really important that you take the time to understand your gauge and follow the instructions of what needle or hook size to use. We'll talk a little bit more about gauge once we start knitting. Now that we've looked at this large range of yarn weights, let's talk a little bit about the fiber content. I've used words like acrylic and wool, superwash, non-superwash, so what does all of that mean? Any of these fiber weights can come in a variety of fiber contents. Let's look at some of the different fibers used in the yarns in front of us. This lace weight runner from Ikigai Fibers is made up of 70% nylon and 30% polyester. Next, this DK weight from Ancient Arts is made up of 100% superwash extra fine merino. So with a superwash, that's telling us it is wool, but it's safe to go through the washing machine and it can handle some heat and it can handle agitation. With most any high quality yarn, I'd recommend hand washing just to give your projects the longest possible life. Our DK weight yarn from Scout is 100% wool, but it's not a superwash wool. Again, that means it's not safe to go through the washing machine because the heat and the agitation would cause the fiber to felt, shrink, and come together into a really dense fabric. Sometimes people choose non-superwash yarns because they want to felt their project. They're making something like a felted animal, a felted bag, maybe a slipper or shoe. And so you make an oversized project and then you purposefully agitate and heat the project so that it shrinks and felts into a really sturdy piece of fabric. Other times people choose non-superwash for things like color work. The sweater I'm wearing is made from Scout because non-superwash has a lot of integrity. It holds its shape well it has great stitch definition and it shows the colors. I specifically used it for this sweater because I made this cardigan in the round and later steaked it, meaning I cut the cardigan up the middle and I needed the edge of it to felt together so that the yarn wouldn't come undone. One more fiber content we'll look at is from our Aran Weight yarn from Blue Sky Fibers. This yarn is made up of 55% baby alpaca and 45% fine merino. All of these fiber contents just give us yarn that feels different and behaves differently. Certain yarns have more drape or give based on their fiber content. Others breathe more, feel lighter or heavier. So it all depends on what you can find, what you wanna pay for, 
and what you want your project to feel like in the end. Now that we've explored different fiber contents and weights of yarn, let's take a quick look at some of the resulting fabrics we can get from knitting. First, we have this cabled sweater that I did out of a DK weight. I used Rowan felted tweed, and this pattern comes from Thea Coleman of Baby Cocktails. It's called Vesper with a Twist. And then I've got A Weekender by Andrea Mowry. This is a really popular pattern. You'll see a lot of them around. And I used worsted weight yarn. I used Malabrigo Rios, which is a superwash yarn, which gives this um, a lot of stretch and growth. It's very comfortable, easy to wear. And next I have this sweater, which was done out of a light fingering weight yarn held with mohair. This is the Cosmo sweater by Simone Ryan, and I used Perennial from Kelborn Woolens and um, Sensei from Ido Yarns. Next up we have a field sweater. This is another really popular pattern. It was featured on the homepage of Ravelry for several months this last year, and it's by Camilla Vad. For that, I used DK Weight Scout, and at the top, the green section, is a mohair, again, from Ido, and the yarn is called Sensei. The next sweater is another design from Thea Coleman of Baby Cocktails. This was done out of a worsted weight I used, I have to think about it, <laughs> I used wool stock worsted weight wool stock for this cabled vest. This is a non-superwash yarn, so it gives it some structure and it doesn't have too much growth when I wear it. This next sweater is a lighthouse keeper from Lindsay Fowler, and it's actually made of the same color of wool stock as the vest I just showed. However, it's held with a color changing mohair called Kid Silk Print, which gives a very fun result, this kind of pastel rainbow. And here we have one of my favorite sweater patterns I've ever worked. This is the Oksa sweater, and it's from Caitlin Hunter. She has great designs, I really like her style, and the way she writes her patterns. I did this out of a worsted weight yarn, again from Woolstock. And then the sweater I'm wearing in this video, this is the Maya sweater. And as I stated before, I did this out of a DK weight scout. And this was a project that I steeked, so I worked it in the round, which means I'm always working the right side of the fabric. I never have to turn the work into a wrong side row, which makes following the color work um, a bit more straightforward, and I enjoy working a pattern that way when I can. So when I finished the sweater, I took a pair of scissors and I cut right up the middle. I had a channel of steek stitches set aside for safety, and after cutting, I felted that raw edge, um, I needle felted it, and then I was able to pick up stitches for the button band. So you can see all of my floats and carries on the inside of the work, and then inside the button band we see this raw edge, which is just um, two columns of knit stitches, which have been felted. I stab, stab, stabbed with a little needle tool, and it holds the fiber together because I used a non-superwash wool. So that's a reason certain people like to choose superwash versus non-superwash, depending on the technique they might use later in the finishing of a garment. And I have one more sweater I'll feature in these highlights, and that is the Painting Bricks sweater. This comes from Stephen West, another very famous pattern. You'll see a lot of these floating around. And I used a fingering weight superwash yarn. It was a sock yarn from Sweet Georgia, Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock. To acknowledge reaching a thousand subscribers, I'll be giving away one 100 gram skein of Superwash Merino. It's a hand dyed skein from Tina's Twisted Fibers. Tina is a local hand dyer to me in Northeastern Ohio, and you can purchase her yarns through Around the Table Yarns in Shaker Heights, and through their website, which I'll link below. So for this giveaway, all I ask is that you be subscribed to the channel, and then to enter, head over to my most recent video, which was unpacking my $2,500 yarn haul, and leave a comment 
stating which yarn from the video was your favorite. Um, that's all it takes. When you go to that video, leave a comment and say, my favorite yarn in this video is blank, and then you'll be entered. For this giveaway, I ask that you have a mailing address that is in the contiguous United States or Canada. For future giveaways, I'd love to include international viewers, but for this, since it's just a single skein uh, for the cost of shipping, that's what I can handle for now. Again, to enter, head over to my most recent video, that's the $2,500 yarn haul, and simply leave a comment stating which yarn is your favorite from the video. The contest will be open from Sunday, January 7th through Saturday, January 13th at midnight. After that point, I'll pick one of you at random and I'll contact you to ship out the yarn. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end of this video. By no means am I an expert on any of this. I'm pretty new to fiber arts as I've been knitting for the last six years, but I have a lot of great mentors and teachers in my life and I'd like to use this channel as a platform to share what I know and what I care about with you. So if you're new to fiber arts or a pro, I hope there was something in this video that you learned or enjoyed watching. If you find that these videos are helpful to you or just an enjoyable way to pass the time, I'd appreciate you showing your support any way you can. Liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel of course helps me grow my platform. If you have friends who knit, crochet, or craft, feel free to share a video you like with them. And I also have a link in the description box to support me by buying a coffee. It's a one-time way to show support if you're learning something here and appreciate the videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.